So tapping the arrow gives you the ability to reply, uh, to forward, or to print. If this message um, had multiple recipients on it, there would also be an additional box that said reply to all. So it's very easy to reply, to send, uh, to forward, or to print in any of the messages that you get in your inbox. Okay, if we tap on, let me go back one slide here. The folder here next to the trash can, to the left of the trash can, if we tap that, what that does is it allows you to, as it says here, uh, move a message to any of the mailboxes that you have or any of the folders. So now this says over on the, the left, it says mailboxes, not inbox. So under mailbox, we can see my, we have my sent folder, my trash, we have archive, and we have a few other folders I've created here just for demonstration purposes. So if I wanted to move this message to uh, the webinar folder, I would just tap webinar and you'd actually get a visual of it moving that message over into that folder. So it's very easy to keep your messages maintained and to manage what, where your messages are, are going into multiple folders. Okay, um, this is actually a shot of your um, selecting the account option. So for my Yahoo account, we're not just seeing my inbox, but we're seeing any drafts, we're seeing any sent uh, messages, there's a folder for that, again, trash. And then there's a host of other folders that are created down here below in which I can uh, sort and or manage my uh, email messages. The cool thing with iOS 5 with the release of that, before you would have to actually log into email on your web browser in order to create any new folders or to delete any new folders. But with iOS 5, you can actually manage those and create those directly from your iPad. If I were to tap this edit button, I'd be taken to a screen at the bottom where it would say new mailbox. The new mail mailbox option would give me the, basically the ability to create a folder. Mailbox and folders are used synonymously, um, so don't be thrown off if you see that. You're not actually creating another email account, you're just creating a folder within the existing email account. Okay, um, you also have the ability to search your entire mailbox for any messages. So by tapping in the search inbox option, so let me see if I can go back to the screen if I have it here. Uh, no, I won't, yeah. But if you're looking and if you're in your inbox and you scroll all the way to the top, you just slide your finger down, you will see this search inbox option. Once you tap in that option, you will then see four different options here. You can search the from, the to, the subject, or all. So if you were looking for a particular message from someone, you could type their name tap the From button, and then tap Search here, and it would actually go through your messages and find the, that email message for you. Granted that that message is downloaded from the server to your iPad. If it doesn't find it on the iPad, it gives you the option to continue the search on the server. And the server would be, for instance, the Yahoo server. I have probably five, 6,000 email messages on Yahoo but I only download probably 100 to 200 email messages, the most recent ones, on my iPad. If I were searching some, for something a year back, a year ago, then of course I'd want to search on the server because I know that's not going to be on my iPad at the time. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much the mail client. There's, that's the tip of the iceberg. There's a ton of other options and features that are available in, in it, uh, but if we do another session, then we can cover some more of those things in detail. So using the calendar. Uh, the calendar basically you can use it to, of course to manage your schedule, you can create events. We have multiple views for calendars and uh, that will be uh, explained when we start seeing the slides. You can maintain multiple calendars, which I do, and of course you can set uh, reminders and alerts for your calendars and your events. I'll just I use my calendar every day, saves my life. Okay, so looking here on our home screen, we see here, uh, we have our calendar icon here, and once you tap that, it will actually start the application uh, for us. So let me go ahead and go to the next slide. And this is what it looks like. So uh, starting at the top here, we're looking at a day view. So you notice we have a day view here, you know, so which gives you an individual day. We have a week view, gives you a snapshot of a week, from Sunday to a Saturday. We have a month view, which I personally use the most. 
get a snapshot of the entire month. Then we have a year view where you can look at your entire year, see how busy you are. The reds are, you're really busy. The light orange, um, of course, you're kind of busy. You can see the colors basically are associated with the number of things you have going on those days. And then we have the list view, which basically, oops, I lighten up the calendar, that would fail. Which basically gives you a list of items and things that you have on your calendar. So you have the option of looking at any of those. Navigating between those are best. It's just a matter of taking your finger and tapping day, week, month, year, or list view. Then you have calendars. So I have on my iPad lots of calendars. So I have calendars that are synchronized from my Mac. And basically those calendars, if I add anything on those calendars, it stays on my iPad. It's not synchronized with anything else. Then I have calendars that are stored in iCloud. My iCloud calendars are synchronized, so if I add something on my iPad, if I add an event on my iPad and I select that event to be stored or placed on any of these calendars under iCloud, that event will then be automatically synchronized and pushed to all of my other devices that also have iCloud on it. So many times I've had a client, I have my iPhone, I had, a, I had an event on my calendar on my iPhone, it automatically shows up on my iPad, and vice versa. If I add something on my iPad, it automatically shows up on my iPhone or on my computer as well. It can get a little confusing with calendars if you are, are, are migrating from um, an older, an iOS 4. Um, it can get a little confusing because sometimes people get duplicate, um, it looks like they have duplicate events. That's just because they have it on two separate calendars. So, uh, and hopefully we can do a class on calendaring itself, which would be great. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide here. So, you can also edit your calendars. So, basically, I'm editing my home calendar here, and it gives me the ability to select a color. If you have multiple, um, if you use multiple calendars and you duplicate the colors, that's when things get confusing, which you'll see on my calendar. I have some of those as well. Um, but you select a color that will represent um, that calendar and the events that are stored on that calendar. Of course, you can delete calendars as well if you don't want to have that on your device any longer. Adding an event. So if we, let me see if I can go back a couple of slides here. Go back to the, back to the month. If you look at the bottom of the screen here, I hope it's not cut off. Down a little bit. There's a plus sign here in the bottom right-hand corner. This is one way to add a new event to your calendar, okay? So I'm going to go back to that slide. After tapping that plus sign, you will see this screen right here, the Add Event screen. This screen allows you, of course, to add the title of the event, the location, and then change the start time, and we're going to see that. You can repeat the event, um, and we'll see what that looks like. You can also invite people. Uh, just email them, and it'll send them a notification that they've been invited to something. You can set alerts. We'll see that. Where it says calendar, this is referring to the multiple calendars that we just looked at. You can select uh, any of those calendars that we saw on that previous screen to store that event. And then there's an option for availability or biz. So you can see if you set, it, um, set it if you're busy or free. You can also store URLs in your event in case you need to go to a website. For instance, if you had it... Um, calendar this event today, you could have just put the URL for the invitation here, and by going into your calendar, you just click that, and it'll take you directly to the, uh, the site. And you can also use notes, which I use a lot of time if I need to enter codes for uh, webinars or anything of that nature as well. So here we're looking at the uh, setting the time for the event. Very easy to do. has a, um, a, a, a will here that you spin. Select the day in which you want to um, uh, start the event. You have the hour, you have the minute, and then you have whether it's an a.m. or p.m. So you would do that for the start and the end. If you have an all-day event, if you're going on vacation or something of that nature, you can just tap, uh, slide this uh, button over, the all-day button to on, and it will block out that entire day for you. So let me see if I can go in. 
next slide basically shows us you have the ability to repeat events. So if you have weekly meetings or monthly meetings or every two weeks, you have the ability to select when to repeat that event. That way you don't have to go through your entire calendar uh, and set that event up. Whenever you turn repeat on, you get another option that gives you the ability to set when you want to end that repeat. So if you had a meeting with a client for the next four weeks, basically say every week, then you'd go right underneath that and give you the ability to say when does that repeat end. You just put the date in there just like you select the start date and it would end that repeat on those dates. Really, really easy to use. Alerts. I use these on all of my events. This basically gives me a notification of when my event is going to happen. You have the option to do two days before, one day before, get down to the hours, and then you get down to the minute. The great thing is that you can set not only one, the next slide will show you, you can set two, of, two alerts. So my first alert here is set to day one, one day before. Then usually I'll set my second alert depending, depending on the um, seriousness or the um, importance of the, the event. I'll set it for either an hour or two before or I'll set it to five or ten minutes before. So really great to do that and it pops up on your iPad. And if you have um, iCloud, it synchronizes to your calendar on your iPhone and it pops up on your iPhone as well that you have an event that's coming up. So here's the option where you can select a calendar, whichever calendar you're going to store this event on. You also have the ability to share calendars. You see some of these calendars are shared with other folks. You actually have to do that on your computer to share them, uh, but that's a really cool option because when I add something to these calendars, it notifies the person that I shared the calendar with that I have an event or an appointment on those days. And then you can set your availability to busy or free. Again, you have the option to add, and uh, here's the next one is the option to add, whoops, excuse me, add URL or notes in any of those appointments. So the next slide basically shows us when we created that last event, we tap the plus sign in the corner, the bottom right hand corner. If you want to create an event on any particular day, in the month view or the week view, if you just take your finger and tap and hold in that day, it will bring up a screen that looks like this that says new event. You then have the ability to edit that event and you have all of those options that we just um, re uh, reviewed by tapping the plus. Plus, you go through the same uh, set of options, except you've already pretty much set a time for that uh, event. Of course, you can modify it if it's not at the appropriate time when you tap in the, um, the day. And it's, it's more accurate if you use a, um, a day um, view to do that. By tapping on the day, you can tap exactly on the hour you want the event to start. And all you have to do is set the time that you want the event to end. In the top right-hand corner, we have the ability to search again. So it, it, by typing day in this box, it searches my calendar and it finds any events that have the word day associated with it, and it lists those events here for me. So if I tap on any of those events, it would take me and open uh, to that event in that day and open that event, and I can see any of the details that I've stored in there. So a really easy way to search your entire calendar and find out um, what's going on uh, in the future or even what's happened in the past. In your settings, there's an option to, you know, there's an option to um, configure your calendar. So here you can have new invitation alerts. If somebody uh, sends you an invitation to something, you can get an alert. It, have, of course, has time zone support. So if you're traveling across multiple time zones or people across multiple time zones, the syncing option basically tells it how far to sync if you're using iCloud. If you only want to sync a week or two, you can set that option there. And then you can have default settings for your uh, alert times if you want every event that you create to have an alert of, let's say, one day before, you can go in here and set that so whenever you create it, it will automatically be there and you don't have to do that each time. You also have a default calendar, which means uh, it will just store that event on that calendar. I use multiple calendars, so the default calendar for me, uh, I'm typically always changing it. So that's an overview of uh, calendar. Photos. Uh, photos, uh, the application allows you to view and manage your photos. You can create albums, 
You can share photos by emailing them. Of course, you can print them, and you can uh, create really cool slideshows to uh, amaze your friends and family uh, from all those photos that you've taken. So we're going to take a little look at this. So the photos icon is right in the middle of the screen, the one with the flower right in the center there. So by tapping that, it brings us up to this window where we see uh, four different choices here. At the top, we have photos. This is just showing us every photo that we have stored on our iPad. The next one shows us photo stream. Photo stream is a feature of iCloud whereby if I take a photo with my iPhone, it will automatically transfer that photo to my iPad through PhotoStream and give me the ability to save that photo on my iPad um, permanently. It's really a cool feature. It takes me usually like about 15 or 20 minutes to explain it, and if you uh, attend or go on the um, site, I think there's an iCloud presentation that I definitely go through that more in depth. Um, albums. Pretty self-explanatory. You have the ability to create albums so you can find your pictures. I think on my iPad here, I think I have about 6,000 pictures, so finding them can be difficult if it's not in an album. And then places. Uh, I was recently in Juneau, Alaska, and I snapped a few photos, and it's basically attached the location of those photos, uh, location on those photos, and dropped it on a pin here on a map so you can see where those photos were actually taken. You'd actually have to have location services on in your settings in order for this to work. And you, of course, need to be connected to a Wi-Fi or you need to be you need to have cellular service in order for that um, location to be uh, determined. But it's a really cool feature. Works great with iPhoto, too. Okay, so um, if we look at, I'm going to go back a couple slides here. Okay, if we look at the um, top right hand corner here, we see that little box again with the arrow. That's always sort of your export or your select box. So by tapping that box, it will actually take us to this screen here, which allows us to select photos. So then I can just tap with my finger any photos that I want to select. And I think the next slide is going to show that I've tapped about five photos. There we go. So there's five photos that are selected with the check boxes next to them. So once I've selected photos, I then have multiple options. I can share them, I can copy them, I can delete them. And deleting can be kind of tricky, depends on how you get your photos into your iPad. Or I can add them to different options, or canceling will just deselect them. Now let me take this opportunity to say, the way you um, get your photos on your iPad is, of course, there's a camera option on your iPad. You can take photos with your camera, and it will store it in your camera roll. You can also download photos, or people can email them photos to you, and it will store those in um, photos as well. Of course, you can get photos through PhotoStream, and you can also get photos on your iPad by uh, connecting it to your computer, going and syncing it with iTunes. So there's multiple ways to get your photos inside of uh, the application. Let's go. So by tapping the share button for these five photos that I have selected, I have the ability to email them, I can print them, or I can send someone a text message or an SMS message to their phone, to their iPad, and it will transfer those photos along with it. Really easy to share photos. If I tap the add to button, I can add it to an existing album, and we saw all of my albums there on the previous slide, or I can create a new album and place these photos in a brand new album so it'll be easy for me to find them at a later date. So if you tap an individual photo, it, um, you get a full view of that photo on your iPad, and you get some other options here. So you can see here I have 6,300 photos on my, my iPad. Um, you can, if I tap the Photos button here in the top left-hand corner, it'll just take me back to the previous screen where I'm linking at all of my photos. There are some editing features, um, minor editing options uh, on your iPad, which you can do for photos. You also have the ability to create a slideshow. Again, there's that um, export or share button, or I have the ability to delete an individual photo right from the screen. Go to the next slide here. By tapping the edit photo, the edit button, excuse me, let me scroll down here so you can see it. It gives you a few options. We can rotate it, we can do an auto enhance, you can fix uh, red eye reduction, 
and then you can crop your photos. Not a lot of options on here. This is really more of an organizer uh, versus a photo editor, so you really don't have a lot of options there. But you can do a few of the, um, the automatic uh, editing options, and it will make your photo better. By tapping the export button, of course, since I'm on an individual photo, I can email it. Again, I can message it. I can assign it to a contact. So if I wanted this photo to be assigned to this person's contact, I can do that. I can use it as my wallpaper, which you saw on my home screen. I had a, a car as my wallpaper. You can also tweet it, you can print it, or you can copy it. So it's really easy to share uh, your photos with um, pretty much anyone through one of those uh, options you have there. If you wanted to create a slideshow, if I tap the slideshow option, it gives me uh, transitions and it gives me the ability to play music. And once you tap play music on, if you were to tap music here, you'd have full access to your iTunes library. So all of the songs that you have on your iPad, you can um, link those up with your slideshow. Go to the next slide. So here are some of the transition options. You have a dissolve, cube, ripple, wipe, and uh, origami. So you basically play around with those and find out what you like and select one of those options. Here's looking at my iTunes library. You have full access to your playlist, all of your artists, all of your songs, your albums, and then you can search things like composers and genre and things like that under the more option. So it's really easy to um, select photos, create a slideshow from that. If you have an album, um, once you enter that album, there's a slide, there's a play button on the bottom which automatically starts your slideshow. Very easy to do that. You can do some custom, a little customization for your slideshows as well. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about really briefly is FaceTime. FaceTime is just your video chat option. You've probably heard of Skype, Tango, some of those other um, chatting options. Even Google has uh, one now, I think Circles or something of that nature. FaceTime gives you the ability to chat with other i or Apple users. You can only chat with people who have FaceTime, so on both ends, both parties need to have the FaceTime application in order for this to work. What it does is it allows you to connect with your family and friends, and of course, you must either have be connected to an internet, or you must either have a cellular service, an iPad with cellular service, in order to do this. Go to the next slide. So once you tap the um, FaceTime icon, it basically brings you up to a screen here. I just blacked out my camera here. Uh, if I didn't black out my camera, you'd basically see your face in this camera until you call someone. So you have the ability to select favorites, which are people you con um, contact or FaceTime often. Uh, and if you tap the plus sign and add favorites, accessing your contacts. Again, your contacts are valuable because it's, they're helpful for your email. They're helpful for when you're sharing your photos. They're helpful for when you're doing FaceTime, and they're even helpful if you're doing your calendar, if you want to invite someone, um, one of your contacts to one of your events. So by tapping the plus sign here under favorite, I could just, I've added these people as my favorites um, because I FaceTime with them often. The next screen shows me my recent um, calls that I FaceTime people with, and it gives me the date and the time. The ones in red are the ones that I've missed. So I have an option here right now. It's just showing me all of the FaceTime calls. If I were to tap the missed option, it would only show me these ones in red here. Okay. And then this is my contacts. Um, let me scroll down a little bit so you can see that. Oh, my computer is locking up. Not good. Um, so it's, bas it's basically showing me a list of all of my contacts for FaceTime, and uh, I can tap any of those and basically uh, chat with them or connect with them. Um, of course, again, they need to have FaceTime um, on their uh, device in order for that to work. And you can FaceTime people through email. You can FaceTime them through their phone numbers if they have a cell phone number, an iPhone 4 with a forward-facing camera, um, or of course you can... FaceTime with people, even on computers. On my uh, MacBook Air, I have FaceTime on there. It gives me the ability to, uh, to talk or to chat with other folks as well. If you wanted to create a new contact, you tap the plus sign under contacts. You can go in and add the person in. You have either their mobile number or their home email. 
can add additional information address uh, for URL information here. Or sometimes, like such as myself, I have multiple email addresses. Sometimes people only want to be FaceTimed through certain email addresses. But again, this is more of your contact contact management, which allows you to easily select whom you want to FaceTime with. Okay, so in summary, we talked about the various models and options for iPad. We have the Wi-Fi only, the 3G, or the cellular options, excuse me. We also have different storage options, um, a 16, a 32, and a 64 gigabyte. That just allows you to store more photos and or music. And by the way, my iPad with my 6,000 plus pictures is a 32 gigabyte iPad. I have probably about 2,000 songs on it. Um, and I have lots of applications. I'm not going to say I have pl plenty of space, but it, it is uh, capable of handling quite a bit of, uh, of applications and data. We talked about browsing the Internet, how easy that is. Do Safari. You can uh, easily read sites. You can look at multiple sites through tabs. You can bookmark, and um, you can set up sites for uh, to read later uh, through your reading list. We looked at our email client, which is excellent. You can look at all of your email accounts if you have multiple ones. If you just have one, you can, of course, read and generate messages there. You can attach uh, or, or receive attachments and open attachments and things through uh, your email client. Um, we talked about your calendar, easily manage your schedule, create uh, events, um, can uh, create alerts and things of that nature. And we talked about photos, how you can. Uh, store and manage your photos. You can share them by printing them. You can do a little editing, create some really cool slideshows. And using FaceTime, you can stay connected with family or friends that are far away, and uh, or even the ones that are close, and just make your conversations come to life uh, a little more easily. So with that, thank you all for participating. If you guys uh, would like uh, presentations or something of that nature, you can contact me at this address right here. And what we'll do is we will take a few questions at this time. So Katie, I will turn it back over to you. Okay. Thanks, Sheldon. Uh, our first question is if anyone has any questions right now, go ahead and type them into the chat panel or the Q&A panel on the right side of your screen. Our first question is, um, I, have an op or I have opened FaceTime and tapped on a contact, and the iPad calls me. Why is that? How do I initiate the calls and receive them and or receive them? Um, typically, if we if back on that screen that I had my favorites, if I were to tap any of those favorites, it will call those people. Um, if it's not calling you, you just, I, well, I, let me say this. It shouldn't call you. Because you can't call yourself unless, uh, yeah, you can't call yourself. So you may be hearing uh, hearing it ring for the other person. Typically, when you tap on some other person that you want to contact, you will hear a ringing, and you will see yourself. And it should say trying to FaceTime with the name of that other other person. So I don't know of a way in which it would call yourself. So just initiating a call would just to be uh, you just tap the contact and it will call that person. Now you need to make sure that they have the capability to do FaceTime uh, before you do that. Some, all of your contacts won't have FaceTime. So if you try to contact somebody without it, of course it's not going to work. Okay, and our next question is, can I add more than one email account from Google to my list? Yes, uh, actually two of my accounts that you saw on my list were um, Gmail accounts. I hope that's the question you're asking. Yeah, so how, how would you add more than one account from Google? Is it just the same way? Do you just hit go into settings and hit um, the Gmail account both exactly. times? Exactly. You just add account, you would uh, select Gmail, and you just repeat those uh, steps. You can add as many uh, email accounts as you, uh, as you have, and they can be from all the same provider. Okay, thank you. And our next question, is it possible to sync the calendar with Google Calendar? It is possible to do it. I've done a little research on this. It can be kind of difficult. It's kind of tricky because uh, they're not 100% uh, in sync. But if you go, when you create your Gmail account, there is an option for you to sync calendars in there. So if you turn that on, it should do a form of synchronization for you. 
the things that I've read is that there are some trouble. There have been some a uh, few issues with it, uh, but there have been some people who have successfully done it. If you do run into any issues, the best thing to do is just to go out and Google syncing my Gmail calendar with uh, iPad, and you'll get a ton of information on how to do that. Okay, and this is going to be our final question. Um, how do I put a picture on my screen under the icons? So I think they're referring to the background. Right. If you go I, under set, yeah. If you go under uh, your settings, there's an option that says um, background. And wait, let me pull up my iPad here really quick. But I know there's an option that says background. So if you tap the background option, it will give you um, full access to your photos. Remember how we just looked at all of our photos? So any of those photos that I had on my screen, I could make that um, my background screen. So yeah, let me just point out, open it up my iPad here really quickly. So if you go to settings, uh, excuse me, it's the one, two, three, it's the fifth option down, it's brightness and wallpaper. So if you touch wallpaper, then it'll open up your photos and you can set any of those options. Okay. And so that's all the time we have today for questions, but thanks everyone for attending. Um, when you close out of this screen, you, sh you will see a pop-up window come up with a survey. If you could take a few minutes to just complete that, we'd really appreciate it. Um, we want to make sure that we're presenting the content that you're looking for, and there's really no way for us to know without some feedback. So thank you for doing that. And Sheldon, thank you so much for presenting today. It was a great presentation. Um, I think a lot of people found it very valuable based on the feedback. So thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your and, day. Yep. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.